Notion has just released a major update to their Notion AI feature, as well as a rebrand of their Notion AI Assistant. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the five key changes, as well as discussing some concrete use cases for how you can make the most of this update. There are some really exciting changes with the update, as well as some areas which I think still have real limitations. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the feature the updates, and also giving some thoughts on where I'm hoping Notion AI will be going in future. So let's take a look. If you already have Notion AI as an add-on in your workspace, then you'll notice that this star icon has turned into this little Notion AI assistant character. That basically tells you that the update has completed on your in your Notion workspace. If you don't have Notion AI already, the way to do it is to go into your workspace settings and under plans or billing, you'll have an option to add Notion AI as an additional feature. It is an add-on to the existing plan, so you won't be seeing this Notion AI feature if you don't have the add-on uh, installed in your, in your workspace. But once you have it, you'll be able to see that the update has kind of cleaned up the layout for this chatbot. Um, you'll be able to find your chat history in this view history. Um, icon here. And then there are some other options like connecting Slack and Google Drive if you wanted to have even more added context to this particular AI assistant. But the first big change or the big upgrade that I've noticed for this Notion AI assistant is actually down here, which is basically giving us selective knowledge or context every time we interact with our AI assistant. Now Notion is actually one of the best tools to implement this feature because one of the more common use cases for Notion is basically just dumping all of your documentation, all of your projects, all of the tasks and content and things that are going on in your business or in your workspace. Basically Notion ends up being this big hub which is collecting all of your knowledge and information. And it's really handy if you can be selective about which information you would like the AI assistant to reference when it answers a question or helps you out with a task. So in my landmark business OS, there's a lot of information about different projects, different tasks, different ideas, thoughts, articles, content. And previously, the Q&A assistant used to be only really helpful when I wanted to find something in all of that. Um, and even then, the <clears throat> native Notion search was probably better than using the Assistant. But now, with this feature, what this lets me do is be very particular about the information that I want this Assistant to use in its context window. So I could quickly just choose the, uh, the page that I'm on. There's also this nice addition, which is to just choose the Notion Help Center. So that's really useful if you have specific questions about Notion itself, how to use Notion. Um, or you can, by default, use the all sources, which is what the previous version did by default. So I'll give you an example of how this might be used uh, to help you complete a specific task. Let's go into this content section of the workspace. And let's say that I wanted to write a new article on how to add tags to a Notion database. I'm gonna write it as a blog post. I'm just gonna open up this page. And let's just make this even clearer. Let's open it up full page. So we have this um, article that we wanna write. And I could ask Notion AI to focus on this page and I could say, help me write an SEO article based on the title of this page. And the cool thing here is I can reference a document of a content example or a creative brief or uh, any other information that I would like to feed into it to give it more specific information. I could say reference this document as an example of the structure. And then what I can do is type at, or I can click at in this bottom, bottom corner here. And what I want to search for is this 
SEO content example, which I created in my documents library. And that's going to be an example of an SEO post in the formatting and structure that I like. So by just giving access to this open page, as well as specifying my content example, when I ask the assistant to help me with this, I'm going to get a much more targeted and relevant output which wasn't always the case when using the old assistant. It had too many pieces of information that it was trying to fit together into the response. Whereas this, now I can actually specify a single document that I want it to use as the example or as the reference. And then I'm gonna get a much better output from the AI assistant. So I can actually do the same process using the inline instead of the chat. So if I type space, that gives me access to the Notion AI assistant, write an article, etc. And then again, if I just type at, I can mention the page. It's the exact same functionality as this chat box here. But what I can, what I wanted to show you is that if you wanted to move information from this chat into a page, this is another nice little addition to the assistant which Notion has made with this latest update. So. There are a few options. You'll see after this gets generated, I now have an option to save the content as a page. I can insert it into the page. Or I can even just copy the text and then paste this directly here. And now we have the content of this article in my article content piece database. As I mentioned, I could also save this as a page on its own. So if I were to click save page, then I can choose where I want this to be added to. So I could add this to my content database. So if I save that into my content database, we'll see that a new post was added to the database directly and that has the content there as a page ready to go. So this is a nice addition. After you click save as page, it's going to actually convert the response that you see in the chat into a page itself, which you can then open directly. Um, because it was added into the database, you can see that there are all of the properties here and I can actually even edit those properties directly from my chat, which is just again, kind of a nice intuitive addition, which this new chat supports. I'll give another example of the insert chat into page elements. So let's go over to projects. We have this SEO campaign here, which currently doesn't have any tasks attached to it. So what I would like to do is create a new chat and I'm going to ask about this page. I'm just going to say, give me a list of tasks to help a list of to do's. Now I have this project plan on the page, which has some information about what I would like to include in the project. So if I open this up, there we go. And it's going to take all the information that it has access to on this page, including the tasks and project plan information. And then what I'm gonna do is, well, I could just insert this onto the page directly. It's gonna go to the bottom of the page though, which is a little bit annoying. So let's just move this up here. And then because Notion works in blocks. I can actually take all of these bullet points and because they're individual blocks, if I move them into my tasks board like this, I'm going to get a list of individual tasks, all of them set to not started. So that's kind of a neat way that you can go back and forth with the chat and Notion's database items for things like turning to do's into tasks very quickly. If I then were to adjust the status of these tasks, move some around, I could then ask Notion more, in, more about this page, specific questions about the tasks database. So things like, give me a summary. Let's start a new chat just to make sure it doesn't cheat with the old answer in this project and their current status. And this has actually given us a very good example of one of the limitations of the Notion AI assistant right now. It's not that good at reading and understanding the context of database views that are inside the page. So what's happened here? 
I asked it to give a summary of the tasks related to this project. It has been able to read the contents of the page. So it knows that there is the project goals, keyword research, perform a website audit, but it's given me just 10 of the tasks when there are actually 13 tasks on the, on the view. It's also said that the overall project status is listed as not started, which is true, but that's not what we asked. We asked about the task status. And so in order to actually get it to answer more detailed questions about this database, I would need to go into the database itself and then maybe ask the question again. So this is just something to be aware of is that while it says it can read everything on the page, when you start to have multiple database views and links, um, it doesn't always actually pick up some of the properties that you're asking about. So that's just worth being aware of. And the last thing that I'll share is that this assistant seems to be a bit more promising in terms of the, in terms of reading attachments. So if I were to, for example, attach a, an invoice file, this is just an invoice for my accounting software. If I say, uh, turn this into a table, and the contents of this PDF into a table. Ask it to do that. It's going to be able to take the information and translate it or turn it into the information that we want, which I could then quickly add by copying and adding as a new invoice in my database. Again, some limitations to point out for the attachments and this ability to read documents. Some PDFs, it actually doesn't handle very well. It says that it's encoded and it has having trouble reading the contents of the page, which is not ideal. Also for things like converting a table into a database and the properties that are needed for the database, it's not really that helpful. Ideally, you would want to be able to take this invoice and immediately add it into a database with the correct properties, but at the moment, the assistant actually isn't able to edit and interact with your databases. And the last thing, which is really uh, quite a limitation, is it doesn't let you attach uh, CSV or spreadsheet files. It's only going to be PDFs or docs. But at least we can see this is a step in the right direction, and I imagine that those functionalities are things that Notion will be adding soon to the assistant. So, Five key changes just to recap are selective knowledge. So you can give specific context to your assistant to get even better outputs than just by using the entire knowledge base. Two, you can save the chat outputs as individual pages and you can even specify where you would like to move that page into. So you might move the entire page into a database. And now what we have is in our chat, we might have an entire project plan or proposal or content piece, which we can then quickly move into the relevant database. We can also insert chat outputs directly onto a page. So that might be useful for quickly adding, as we saw a list of to do's and then dragging them into a task database. Number four, we can read elements on the page, but as we saw, it's still somewhat limited. So just be aware that while you can extract some information and summary about a page that you're on. It's not going to handle multiple database views and the contents of those databases very well. And lastly, attachments, you can now read PDFs, get summaries and ask it to do things with the contents of a PDF. So just stepping back and summarizing a little bit about this Notion AI update. I think it's clear that this AI assistant is still going to work best with very direct instructions. So just asking it to summarize or come up with a plan based on everything that it sees on the page is probably not the best way to use it. The way that I think about this is that these generative AI tools are best for extrapolation, not the best for expertise. So if you want it to give you 10 more content ideas, if you want it to write the entire article based on a title, very good at extrapolating information, not so good at giving expert advice or really intelligent project planning just yet. 
But the selective context is a really nice addition and the ability to make use of all of the docs and content that you're already storing inside of Notion by using the at feature and then finding a specific page that you'd like to reference. I think it's a great addition from Notion's AI team. And lastly, while it might be something that you get used to, if you're not already using Notion AI, if you're not really diving that deep into making use of the assistant, it can still be a bit clunky moving back and forth between the chat, between different databases and views. I think that they are exploring um, really nice UI elements and the Notion team has a really nice implementation of Notion AI when you are writing something on the page. But in terms of getting this chat to really flow with the rest of your workspace, personally, I think it's not quite there yet and I'm looking forward to more additions in that integration. In terms of looking forward, the one thing that's still missing for me is the ability to use some of these Notion AI features in the button workflows. So it will be really nice to see in future, we have this button, if we have an action which is some kind of generative AI um, feature, in future that would be a really nice addition and it would make these workflow automations a lot more powerful and it would make Notion even better. So those are my first impressions of this new Notion AI update. Let me know what you think, if there's anything that I missed or if you have any follow-up questions. If you're curious about the workspace that I was using while going through this video, it's called Business OS and I can leave a link to that in the description below if you'd like to use this as your main hub while using the new Notion AI Assistant. Otherwise, try it out, see what you can discover when working with the new Notion AI Assistant. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.